And then we're back. We're back in beautiful, lovely St. George, Utah. And we're with Barrett. And what do we have today? What is this? We have a real oddball here. We do. I, I, I don't do famous airplanes. I just don't. No. This here is a Bud RB1 Conestoga. Um, it's probably best known today as that weird aluminum foil bubble airplane at Pima Air Museum in Tucson. The only surviving example of this aircraft anywhere in the world is in Tucson at this museum. It's missing its tail, it's missing its outer wings, it's missing its engines, and it just looks like it's a quintessential odd duck airplane. Yeah, sad. What makes it so odd and what makes it look like it's covered with tin foils, this aircraft was actually made out of stainless steel. Oh, wow. Um, Take you back once again to the days of World War II when the government was worried about a possible aluminum shortage and looking for alternative materials. A lot of aircraft manufacturers were turning to wood. With wow. Bud Corporation, they were makers, they were stainless steel makers of uh, silverware. And they said, if we can roll it to an incredible paper thinness, we can actually make it strong enough to fly. Uh, against skepticism, they built a prototype and the military was intrigued enough to order um, a production. Wow. They took a long time to make, which is why they kind of ran out of time in the war. Yeah. Uh, the contract was cut, only about 17 to 20 of them were ever built. Oh, okay. They were all, they were done with no rivets, all spot welded. And really? And that's you get this unusual finish. Wow. On, along the aircraft. And you ever, if you ever ha find yourself at Pima Air Museum in Tucson, you look, look at, at the aircraft, you'll be struck by how rough the surface appears yeah. to be. Almost like it's a balsa model or yeah. something covered with aluminum foil. Yeah. That's because they spot welded literally every seam of every girder inside the aircraft. That's amazing. And resulted in this finish, yeah. which I actually seem to have captured. Yeah, I don't. How did you do that? <laughs> well, underneath the aircraft is covered with the aircraft itself is made of expanded bead foam yeah. from the hardware store. Yeah. Carved and sanded, so the rough textured finish of that kind of foam is yeah. perfect for this application. Wow. Then I covered it with thin strips of oracal, yeah. which give me the vertical. Uh, the vertical string. Right, right. Almost like I flight metal, but you're using Oracle. Yeah. 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 I, they come along with a stringer, uh, a straight edge, and a scoring device. Yeah. And I make the lengthwise stringers. Oh my god. And what I'm left with is a finish that res that very closely resembles the real thing. It, it sure does, man. It is very convincing, Barry. You did a splendid job Thank on it. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to... Wingspan we're, is 84 inches. Okay. Her olive weight is in the neighborhood of 8 pounds, I think. Okay. She flies on two motors, propellers, and ESCs stolen shamelessly from the flight line F7F Tiger Cat. <laughs> Propellers, these Tiger Cat propellers just happen to be perfect. For yeah, them. it looks so good. These cowlings are it, taken from the old Park Zone T28. Oh, because wow. Because Conestoga had this air intake scoop on the top of its cowling. Yeah. And it just, uh, just work out. God, it just works. Uh, retracts stolen also from the Flight Line P38. Okay. My gosh, great job, Barrett. Let's get this thing in the air. And and, th right. and, and thank you so much for the history. I mean, because people are, yeah. I don't I, even know. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> well, I, I have been, I've been wanting to build this thing since I was a little kid, going yeah. to the Pima Air Museum. Sure. It's always just a really odd airplane, and I was always very attracted to it. Sure. Think, someday I'm going to build that thing. Yep, and you did. I'm glad I waited till now because if I built this 10 years ago, it wouldn't have looked as much like. No, this. it's it's a winner, Barrett. You again, you you just a winner. Left bank, right bank, up, down, left, right. All right. And look at that. And there, there's a. And that's good, good pilot technique too. No matter how often you've flown an airplane, no matter how many times you think it's bound, you always check. Yeah. This is only. This is only her second day of flying. Oh, okay. Wow. Fourth flight. Okay. I've been telling people it's probably the only flying Conestoga anywhere in the world. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? So uh, again, we're with uh, you know it's just Scratch Builder Barrett Hawkhouse out of out of uh, Mesa, Arizona. And we're at the St. George. This is the John Morgan Electric Fun Fly. Taking off. There we go with the Bud. 
RB1 Conestoga transport aircraft. Oh my god, dude. Seriously? Barrett. Mr. Magoo, you've done it again. What in the world? Look how good that thing flies. I think without this thing, no one would know what a Conestoga looks like in the air. No. And actually, you know, hey, wow. That's, by the way, I want to say that on it's on video. That's actually very deep because this is, this is not Captain like CGI. Well. This is actual real modeling. And this is an actual model of a plane that has been long extinct, kind of like the Dodo, kind of like the Coelacanth. This is a Bud RB1 Conestoga. It was a plane that they were trying to capture some of that World War II money. And uh, they came up, as, as uh, Baird had said, with uh, this was stainless steel, right? Yes. Rolled very thin. So imagine your forks and your knives and your whatever just rolled really, really, really thin and then covered over a, and actually spot welded over a, a frame. No rivets. No rivets on this aircraft at all, really. All spot welded. Uh, has an open nose, right? So you can open the nose and load nope. it from the front? Nope. No? Okay. okay. Loading ramp in the back. Loading ramp you, in the back. If you think about it. So, so but the, the, the cockpit w way above because I guess storage all the way to the front. Yeah. Okay. And okay. If you think about it, this is interesting, but when this airplane was built, nose wheel, car, nose wheel cargo planes that load in the tail right. were almost unheard of. Right, yes. Yeah, so after, war, after the war, we got planes like the C-123, yep. the C-119, yep. the C-130. It became commonplace. But when this Correct. airplane was built, the configuration of high wing, high tail, right. nose wheel cargo plane was very unusual. Correct. Most of the airplanes that succeeded the, the Conestoga in World Your War pass. II were tail draggers, C-46s, C-47s. Oh my God! You're right. <laughs> you're right. Even the C4, C54 uh, DC4. Yep, was an, initially a tail dragger. Well, you no, you had to load it through the side oh, door. The oh, 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 oh! But this right. airplane allowed you to load just straight in from under the tail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that's something we take for granted. Today. Sure. But in in the time of the Conestoga, it was very unusual. Yeah, it was very unusual. In fact, I think what I was thinking about might have been a Russian-made variant of the the, the DC4 because I've seen. I know I've seen photos of, of four four engined uh, transport aircraft tail dragon, so I don't know. I, I, I think that's what I might have been thinking of. But in any event, Barrett's absolutely right. When this plane came out, very unique. I mean, you could load it all the way to the first off. You could load all the way to the nose. Very rare. Had a ramp. And I, I think I've seen pictures of this on the ground, or yeah, on the ground with like an ambulance being loaded into it. That's right. Yep, I've seen that, that famous picture. I downloaded that too. <laughs> Whenever I find interesting planes like this, I try to save everything I can about them because they're just so unique. This is the Bud RB1 Conestoga. Conestoga because Conestogas, you know, were covered wagons. Were covered wagons and they were they were transporting supplies. So landing. Here we go. Do you need rubber on that thing? A little bit. Oh, Barrett, come on. Good job. You know, and it's, it's got to be said too, Barrett, you are you are one heck of a pilot, so. It's kind of your standard World War II radial. Very, Unfortunately, very cool. the one in Tucson is missing. Scale props of the yes. All right. Great job, brother. Great job. All right. Thank you. It is. There at Hawk House and. There's his ground crew, it's his son William, and uh, there's the Bud RB1 Conestoga Pilot's Impressions. 
That was probably the best flight I've had. I've got a video of this thing flying on its second flight on YouTube, and the landing was a little bit choppy, but I just, uh, every time I take her up, I get a little bit more comfortable with that landing. Yeah, so that was this, fantastic. You stuck that one, probably brother. Probably the best landing she's made. Yeah. Well, great job, yeah. Barrett. Uh, great to catch up with you again. Much right, more to you. come. Yeah, yeah. Much more to come from St. George, Utah. We're at the yeah. John Morgan Electric yeah. Fun Fly. We're in St. George, Utah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Hit that notification bell. Smash that like button. Much more to come from St. George, Utah. I'm just winging it. All the best, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers.